Right, so what we've got in front of us is the carburetor from the GS550. Now there's four carburetors, it's four cylinder bikes, so each one of these goes into a different cylinder. Um, on my last video, I knew that the bike wasn't going for some reason and that one of these was leaking it here, um, which possibly pointed to a, a stuck float or something or other. I opened up one of these and it didn't look too bad to be honest with you, but after that video I opened up the other three and it was an absolute mess. Corrosion everywhere, you've got the the copper and brass um, in there had gone all green, it was nasty. So I've cleaned these out and today's video will be showing how to clean these. Um, again, there'll be different ways, people will tell you different things. This is how I personally do it. Um, if anyone has a, has a better suggestion, then go for it. So a couple of things you will need. Carb spray, that's an absolute must. Uh, carb spray is brilliant for cleaning um, dirt, grease, whatever you've got, but also the pressure to blow anything out of the way. For the jets themselves, you can actually use either copper wire, being brass fittings, you need to be quite quite delicate with them. You can't use anything too abrasive. You can't use a, a drill bit, for example, otherwise you're going to knock everything out and chances are it's probably not going to work for you. So one of these is what I find handy. These are little teeth cleaning devices with little bristles on the end. Now they come in different gauges. Um, I can't exactly remember what's what, but you can get fat ones ranging to thin ones. This is a medium sized one and this fits perfectly into my main jet and a little bit left over and these little bristles just help clean it. Um, ever so delicate and they're fantastic for this. I'll open up one of these and I'll take you through the cleaning procedure and I'll also show a quick video at the end of me cleaning this for real because obviously I'm not going to use carb spray in the house. Right, so I'll go into this middle one here actually. Um, it's probably easier to see. So you've got these screws at the bottom here. So this bottom bit comes off now. I've got a little brass screw that will go on there. Now that's to let the fuel out. Um, I've taken that off just so I wanted to to drain the system. It's already had fuel in after I've cleaned it. Uh, this little pipe here is your overflow. So that goes straight out. There's no valves or holes or anything. That's a, a pretty much a straight through hole. Um, and if your fuel level comes too high, it'll simply empty itself out there. These are your floats. These will pivot and what you want is a little bouncy action here, a little rebound. Now that shows that little pin inside has a spring in it, and that's perfect. What you don't want is a damp action or a spring that takes ages to come back out. So, to remove this, um, use something long, something long and thin. Insert your jokes here. If you if you've got nimble fingers, you can pull it out yourself with the finger, or if not, use some pliers. This little pin here holds the float, so as soon as this comes out, the float will come off. Now, make sure that you take note of which way the float goes. Now on here, this has got a little um, bracket, so to speak. Now this will just stop the float from actually falling below a certain level. Now make sure that that goes the right way. Last thing you want to do is have it on the wrong way and then the float won't rise at all. But here you've got a couple of jets. We'll go through the direction of the fuel. That's probably the best way. So the fuel will come in through your pipe up here. Oh sorry, through this pipe here. And it will spread evenly that way and that way. And it will come in through here. So this is a little spring I was telling you about. Now it's very delicate, but make sure that this top bit here, if it's in focus, bounces. That is quite firm and that's exactly how we need it. You need a little spring in. Now this controls the, the flow of the fuel, so 
when the fuel comes up to a, a certain point, exactly like it would in a, in, a, in a toilet system with your ball cock. As soon as your fuel or your water in the toilet comes to a certain level, the float here, which as the name suggests, floats on top of the liquid, will push on that. Actually, it'll be the other way around. We'll push on that and then stop the flow of the fuel. We need to make sure that this is absolutely clean. So we've got these here, we need to take them out. I think that's a 10 mil. Now they shouldn't be too stuck. And when you put them back in, it needs to be torqued perfectly. So again, not too much pressure is needed for that. These are little seals on, so make sure that these seals are perfect, because what you don't want is for this to be shut, but then this to leak fuel. That's going to just cover us as a leak and all sorts, so make sure about that. And then also what you need to make sure here, when you clean this out, you need to make sure that there's nothing around the edge of this. So again, with your carb spray or with a cotton wool bud, what you tend to do is to clean out the inside of that. Or even with one of these little brush, just brush it ever so neatly and just make sure it's all clean and neat. But what you want is a hole through that. Put your carb spray in there and spray it all out. Now it's fairly big cavity. Um, your fuel is going to be coming through that. So don't worry too much about um, tiny spaces. There's nothing tiny in there. This here is your main jet. Now that from what I remember is an 8 mil. This on the bike itself is where I had most trouble. Now there isn't a single hole through this. This is your main jet. Fuel will only travel through this when you open your throttle. Uh, there are other jets and needles and all sorts. Um, that'll deliver fuel to your engine when it's idling. But on the bike itself, this was completely jammed. There was nothing going through. For me, for this GS550, this fits perfectly. So after cleaning that with carb spray, blowing it out and poking the, the dirt out, I could just slip this in and it's not abrasive in the slightest. So it's the perfect tool to use for this. After shining it through the light, you can actually see that there's a hole through it. If you can do the same thing on these side bits as well, you might need a smaller gauge pick. But you might be lucky, it might actually work out that this is the right size. But you need to clean all these and make sure that petrol is sprayed into every direction and then the petrol then gets delivered, mixed with the air, sucked in, and gets blown into the cylinders themselves. You have this little needle here. This, as you can see, when you move the back, when you move the throttle in and out, this will rise up and down. When this rises up, obviously you're creating a, a cavity so more fuel will be drawn in or, or sucked in. So make sure that this is clean throughout. Make sure that this needle is clean as well. So we can replace this. If you have a torque, or a, a torque wrench, make sure that you use that. If not, just make sure it's snug. You don't want to over tighten. Now this is, as I mentioned, the, these are brass fittings. So if you tighten them too much, you'll probably either strip the brass or strip the, uh, the aluminium here. Now you don't want to do either of that, to be honest. This is the idling jet and the GS550 again you've got two sets of these that you need to clean so this is the first one it's got the tiniest hole you've ever seen now I can't remember if this fits or not no it doesn't that doesn't fit so what you can do is use a thinner gauge one of those or even better what I found is a piece of stripped wire so if you strip some wire back and use the copper from inside that what you'll find is that the copper is soft enough not to do any damage Right, if you go inside that with your screwdriver, your flathead, you'll actually find a second set.
this needs to be clean. So this is the second hole that will go through. And then these little holes at the side here again need to be cleaned. Now this will take this, I think, yes it will. But the bottom of it won't. So you're going to have to just rely on your carb cleaner or uh, a can of, of pressurised air to, to blow it out. After you've sorted those two, you can just put it back in. Make sure you put it the right way. And use the proper size screwdriver to just tighten it. Here comes the idling flow. So, as you can see, these, well, the bottom of these cabaretters have holes in which lead to these screws here. Now, this is what controls the flow of your fuel to the carburetor. So when the bike is running, you need to use your carburetor um, pressure gauges or synchronize gauges to um, make sure that all these are synchronizing and obviously running properly. But if this, if this is too low, and what you'll find is that your bike won't run. So, ah, smell of petrol. So that means that petrol is obviously going into there. What you'll find inside these is you've got a spring and you've got this needle here. Make sure this is clean and also make sure that this rubber seal here is in good condition. If there's any cracking or if it's decayed or perished, make sure you replace that. But this is the workings of your bike. This is basically what will help your bike run and start and idle. So as you screw this in and out, what you'll find with this tight thread here is that this will either speed up your engine or slow it down, but these need to be accurate. So then, as I mentioned, you need to use a synchronizer. Now as I've changed the air filter system from standard air filter box that the GS550 has to individual pods. This is all going to have to be reset and synchronized. So that will probably come in the next couple of weeks after I've managed to recharge my battery, which is a different story. Use your 10 mil. Again, don't over tighten if you're not using a the torque crunch. Slot this back in. Now remember the angle of this little angled tab here. Make sure that goes in the same way. Slot your pin back in. And put this back on. Now make sure your gasket obviously seals. If you find that your gasket doesn't seal, you'll need to buy a new one, but this one's fine for this, I've tested it, it seals, it's fine. So this will go back on and your screws go back in. One last jet that you do need to check, and this one is up here. Now again, like the bottom one, this one has a spring inside. Um, but what you'll find is that this controls your air. What you'll see at the top here is you have these little holes here, they deliver petrol or air. When your bike is idling, then this will be completely shut, and then the only form of, of fuel and air that you'll get are through these holes here. And as soon as you open the throttle, then everything inside opens, and you get a lot more fuel delivered into your engine, along with air, and your revs go up. That's basic anatomy of a, of a carburetor and how to clean it. Now you can delve into the top here if you want. I'm not going to show that in this video. This is just a, a whole load of workings, but there's no um, jets or fuel or anything going in there. This is purely the, the smooth mechanism that makes this go up and down. So if you're happy with that, don't touch it.